Hello, hello. This is the Digital Loop, season four, episode ten. Uh, season four, episode ten. In the last episode, we started by mentioning Gary V. I mean, Ivan was all about his impersonation of Gary V. It was a great, great one, Ivan. And we we said that oh, we'll mention Snapchat at some point. And we ended up not really talking about Snapchat. So we thought you know, Snapchat was apparently the big thing at South by Southwest, although VR was uh, as well. Let's talk about Snapchat. So I'm just going to Snapchat Ivan now. How's Ivan? How are you? Hi, Paul. How are you? Yes, yes. I mean, Snapchat is an interesting, interesting phenomenon that is happening that right now it's everywhere. And everybody's doing the Snapchat and everybody's trying Snapchat and everybody's excited about Snapchat. Funny thing is this is a five-year-old company that uh, when it came out, it also came out with a boom. A lot of people were very excited about it. Uh, you and me, of course, as, as early adopters that we are, we, we jump in the bandwagon right away. And I have the impression that you, just like me, we didn't get it. <laughs> like, I got it. I tried a couple of times. Uh, it was not it was not my thing, so I, I didn't use it uh, that much. Uh, and interestingly enough, as you mentioned, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary, for some time, I remember, remember when we were at Le Web, uh, he was uh, uh, in a fireside chat with, with Loic. Yes, and he was talking about uh, a Snapchat. We were there, and back then, this is 2013. He was very, very bully about, you know, very, very active about uh, telling people to jump into Snapchat. Well, today, uh, Snapchat uh, has reported uh, the, the the video traffic has surged to eight billion with a B, eight billion daily video views, <laughs> which makes this interesting. Is the fact is the same as Facebook. Now. This is incredible, especially when you take into consideration that Snapchat has about 100 million users. So you're talking about a very, very, very engaged, very active um, Snapchatters that are really, really taking full advantage of this of this platform. Um, some in more interesting data. This uh, company has its most recent valu valuation is about sixteen billion dollars. So you can see that this is, is is growing and growing. And as as you mentioned before, at South by Southwest, yes, virtual reality. Everybody, you know, everywhere they were just headsets. Virtual reality was the most important thing. But the interesting thing is that everybody was talking about virtual reality through Snapchat. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I know, mean, connecting the I both mean, things is really interesting. Th th that's one thing. First, I mean, Snapchat has been existing for quite a while already. Uh, it's true that a lot of pe uh, people can uh, attach it to, oh, this disappearing texting, with obviously meant to you replace the T with an S and was sexting. That's what people are really caught on at a very early stage. But also, Snapchat has changed a, a little bit what it offers. It's not only now one to one. A platform you can it's a one to many platform there's two ways of doing that doing this either you broadcast yourself and we'll come to that a lot of people try to do that or and you have brands that have now an outlet to broadcast news about themselves as well uh espn is on there i mean it's, it's the the feature is called discover and uh just for that reason like uh, we said many times in this show we encourage you to to take a look at, at snapchat because there's a real engagement there. Now, it's a bit, a, almost a big mystery. Uh, is it really that successful or not? We don't have the right numbers. I mean, these numbers are very impressive. We know that the uh, the ad rate of Snapchat was very high. It's now a bit lower. Uh, people are very excited. Though, I would say that always happens. There's this thing, or this, this platform was mostly used by teenagers, to make it simply at the beginning. And suddenly now you have everybody with gray hair or no hair like me who is trying, and is trying it out. Although, again, like Ivan said, we had an account very early on. We didn't really use it. I, I tried it with my brother to see how it works, and that's, that was pretty much it. So the thing is, it's normal, I would say, that platforms suddenly come into a, a very wide audience because everybody wants to jump at it, especially because, oh, the teenagers are there. It must be important. We need to, to understand that. And the brands are the, uh, act the same. Oh, the teenagers are there. We need to get there to touch them and to talk to them. Uh, it's it's a funny platform. Uh, it's true that we mentioned that Gary V is very active there. Uh, he's been extremely active, actually, if you follow him uh, there. He's, he's doing uh, Snapchats every three seconds, it seems from either New York City or wherever he is. There's other people that do that. Uh, I just mentioned Gray Air. So Mark Sister, a friend of mine, is a VC in LA, has been starting uh, a Snapchat as well. 
And uh, he actually wrote three blog posts about it that are very interesting. Uh, the first one I like because it's called why you should put yourself out there and try new products. This is exactly what we're saying. He says, yeah, yeah, I'm older than the generation that is on Snapchat, but I still think it's valuable. I want to try out stuff. Do you follow uh, Mark, Ivan? Yes, I do. And actually, that is one of the things, talking about how people are using Snapchat. Uh, um, he has an interesting approach. Basically, what he's doing is he's using these short videos uh, that you know you can add up and build what's called stories. And he builds these stories in which he gives, he provides interesting advice to startups and to uh, you know advice connected with uh, venture capital. So you have sh very short videos connected together that become kind of like a. a, a, a uh, you know, a two-minute video, minute video about him sharing his 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 ideas, which I think is a very interesting way to do it. Uh, when you think when you think, when you think about it, it's actually uh, it, it's the same trend that we've seen in all the other products that touch digital. It's the sense of immediacy uh, because at the end of the day, you record yourself. You could do that on, on YouTube, for instance, and put the YouTube video out there. There, there's a sense of immediacy. You have your phone in your hands. You, you're taking a, a video selfie if you want, and you just start talking, and it goes it goes live. That's the sense. That's basically why uh, maybe YouTube is 2.0, this is 3.0, it doesn't matter. Actually, these, the, the, this analogy doesn't make any sense maybe, but there's this sense of immediacy, this sense probably of authenticity as well, because you know if there's not uh, a lot of people are just Snapchatting themselves. Look at Gary Vee again, he's like in an airplane or in an airport or in his office. It's like a, a, a sense of raw, you know, that doesn't exist with very, Elegant produced videos that you might find on on um, on YouTube, for instance. Not saying that YouTube. I'm not discarding YouTube as an outlet. I'm just saying that maybe that's why it's so successful. Uh, other actually very very well known brands and very well known organizations have also jumped on it. I follow, for instance, uh, the White House. The White House is a Snapchat channel. Uh, you can see it's it's actually very. Uh, it's not always fascinating if you, that you follow the president. So it's not, of course, Obama who has the, the phone and, and, and captures himself. But you can you can you can follow the life of, of the White House. It's pretty interesting. The brands of obviously have jumped on it through the through either Discover, which is uh, their outlet, or through directly creating channels as well. Uh, there have been some interesting campaigns because, of course, this is the thing. Uh, there's a sense of immediacy. There's a sense of almost ex exclusivi exclusivity. Sorry, although it's not exclusive, but there's a feeling. And uh, Dunkin' Donuts. So Dunkin' Donuts is not a luxury brand, or whatever. But Dunkin' Donuts has been doing, for instance, in, uh, I think it was 2015. It was last year. They were doing where well, they were starting a campaign. The first 24 hours before starting the campaign, they would give previews or they would actually do some competition via Snapchat. They would give hints of stuff that happened on Snapchat. Remember, bear in mind, and that's also what brands are sometimes afraid, Snapchat, the stuff that you do on Snapchat disappears. It doesn't stay there. You do that, although uh, Snapchat allows you to download the video afterwards so you can reuse it. So that was why uh, a brand like Dunkin' Donuts started doing that. I know that through uh, Jessica. She used to work as a brand manager there. She now lives in London. Uh, and uh, she she told me the story. It's very interesting how you how you know the the brands were a bit afraid at the beginning to kind of move there because it, there's a sense of oh, but that disappears. So we're going to put effort in something that just stays on for 24 hours, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But they got a lot of engagement, uh, and then they, they followed. They actually created even a geo filter uh, at some point, so you could actually you know you can add fun stickers on your Snapchats and stuff. So. So another way to re of revenue for Snapchat is to say, okay, Ivan, you can create, I mean, you need to partner with them, but Ivan, you can create your own sticker that you can distribute to people who are, are actually uh, following you, stuff like that. It's, it's a, uh, is there any other brand you follow or any other personalities you follow, Ivan? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are different different accounts that I follow. As I mentioned, one of the things that I, I haven't been active on Snapchat from the point of view of broadcasting, uh, but I basically you have been, you know, getting to understand the phenomenon by by following different different people some of the people of course as we mentioned before gary um uh, mark uh, mark suster which uh, which you mentioned earlier and which i also want to mention some of his uh, in one of the, the blog posts that he wrote that i think is interesting for our audience um but also that case there justin khan uh, different people artists there's a tons of artists uh, John Mayer, I, uh, that's that's an account that I like because John Mayer was very active on Twitter, and I am a very big fan of his his as an as an artist. Uh, 
And the moment that he quit Twitter, I was like, oh, okay, that sucks. So now he's on Snapchat and, you know, he has a very specific sense of humor. So, so I enjoy I enjoy his accounts. And of course, there is different people, you know, also friends that are sharing, that are sharing what they're doing. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's 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 different. I will, I will mention. I will mention from... uh, so yeah, I'll, before you go there, because I, I will mention two things here, uh, because I linked to what you said. Uh, yeah, there are also there's one feature that is very interesting that Snapchat has, which is to geofence your content. So you could decide that I could decide, for instance, to only broadcast to London. Uh, it's interesting because for brands, you could actually limit the access of content to wherever they want it to be, and you don't have access to it, which is almost impossible in any other platform because it's even if you target, uh, I don't know, Warsaw, for instance, where you live, I still, if I go, for instance, on Facebook, I can still see the content. It's not forbidden for me to see. It's just that the ad were, were probably put for, for Warsaw. So that's something that is actually very used by a lot of people, which also means that sometimes there's content that you and me even uh, uh, cannot see. Uh, another account, and then I'll give you back, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Uh, another account is also another interesting way, the sense of ex exclusivity I mentioned. There's a, a nightclub of all places in uh, Singapore that decided that they don't want, so they have no Facebook presence, no Twitter presence, they have no website. The only way to know what's going to happen tonight, when it's going to be open, who's going to show up as a DJ, is by actually going on Snapchat. And, that's, and then, of course, they also create stories, nice. which is, oh, uh, tonight, you know, there's some party people and whatever, which is uh, Sweet Snaps, it's called. Uh, the account. I'll put it in the, in the show notes. Uh, if I can link uh, Snapchat, I don't, I'm not even sure I can do that, but I'll try to do this. So, yeah. Uh, Interesting use cases that are beyond, it's not only about the fact that the content disappears, but there are use cases that are beyond what's possible potentially on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Sorry I interrupted you, go ahead, Ivan. No, 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 I mean, but, I mean if you think about it, the fact that the content disappears is just driving the behavior. Uh, yes. what, what's, right. what I think is really, really interesting about Snapchat is the fact that for that period of time when you are watching the video, you are putting your full attention into that video. Yes. I mean, if you compare it with, with, with Twitter, with Facebook, that you have you know, the news feeds, that everything is just moving and moving and moving, you might read something and 30 seconds later, you know, you are, you are scanning through, through all the news feed and all the stories that you have there. Here, when you click on a video, you watch that video. And, and if you watch it for 30 seconds, it's 30 seconds that you put your attention into the video. And that's very valuable if you think about it. Right now, the highest competition we're talking about attention so if you manage to create interesting relevant uh, entertaining content that actually engages and then brings you in and you manage to do that in those six seven eight ten seconds that's when you can really really take advantage of this of this platform um there are some a lot of people as you mentioned a lot of brands taking advantage of this platform uh but i i still haven't seen many many examples of companies that are really 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 taking full advantage of it there is one and actually this is a campaign created by by two friends of mine um, back from my days when i used to work for gray um they are gray in denmark uncle gray and 4129 in, in in istanbul they made a campaign for the world wildlife fund uh and I, i'm not sure if they won can because for the for this this uh, campaign and it was about uh, selfies, uh, animals, endangered species, species that you know they will they will appear the picture on the on the snap, and as it will disappear, it will just appear a little sign that says "Don't let this be my last selfie," talking about you know if you know you watched it and it just disappeared, and it was a brilliant message, a brilliant way of using the characteristics and the features of this platform to give a valuable message, and this is what I really really look forward more and more brands trying to understand the medium, trying to understand the features, and coming up with interesting, creative ways to engage and connect. Not just, okay, it's just like Facebook, but yes, or it's just like Twitter, but that, you know what I mean? It's, it's really, really trying to understand the, the characteristics and the audience, because the audience, the characteristics of NASPAT is completely different than the people on Facebook or on Twitter. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, since you mentioned creativity, I encourage you for those who haven't actually yet uh, tested Snapchat. So just open an account, uh, follow Ivan and myself if you want. I don't know if you have your QR code, Ivan, to actually follow uh, so I can follow you. But they are, in terms of creativity, it's very interesting to discover a way I told you. So these are partners of Snapchat. Not everyone can create a Discover channel, of, of course. I'm just looking at my phone now. I have Sky News, BuzzFeed, Comedy Central, Vice, for instance, MTV, uh, Mashable, uh, and Sky Sports, Vox. It's not only that they are there, so it's only about delivering news, etc. Is the way it's done. It's very, uh, you, you, you can feel that the platform has offered them a very different way. It feels like a bit buzzfeed -y sometimes, but a very different way of engaging with the audience. Of course, they think they do that because they go, people are younger, they want to consume content differently. But you can feel that there's been a new wave of creativity about how to create a content. There's a lot of displays that move around, there's embedded videos, they're like quotes that, that pop up. There's something really fun about, about this, to be honest. I, and I, I tend actually to go and discover quite often when I'm on Snapchat, which is daily because I follow people, and I, and I really enjoy the experience. Is it going to replace the New York Times? Probably not, but it's a different way of experiencing things. And I, I believe that's actually valuable and that shows a bit of the, the maybe of the future of consuming content as well, which by the way, is also linked with tools like uh, Periscope, which is uh, Twitter's uh, live uh, video platform. Uh, it was used because Twitter, happy birthday, Twitter, you're, you're 10 years old. Uh, it was used by Twitter the other day to uh, for, uh, uh, it was a little bit, it was not a conference, but it was basically they were talking about the future of Twitter, the state of Twitter. And it's the same thing. There's a sense of immediacy. You go there and you directly interact, you directly like, you directly comment. This is a sense of immediacy that Snapchat plays very well in. Now, the future of Snapchat, uh, it's always because, you know, we are in a bit of a downturn. Uh, Snapchat itself was also, its valuation was, uh, was marked down by including Fidelity, which is a very big VC firm. It's very hard since they're not a public company to have the actual numbers behind it. But I still believe that it's a very fascinating uh, uh, tool. And I, and I think that many more brands will try to get on board and try to play with it. What I like about that is that it puts brands uh, in an uncomfortable position because they're not sure what they're doing, so they have to try. They have to say, okay, well, it, it reminds me of the very early days of social media where brands were not really sure about what they were doing, and it's really the case now compared to, and I'm not criticizing them, but compared to now Facebook, for instance, which has become very established. You know how to, do, to work on Facebook. There's something that is almost like an engine that works well. Snapchat, you're like, oh, like, like you said, even the way, I mean, the first time you logged in probably, like, so, and now what? What do I do with that? There's no, like, obvious buttons where to push, right? You have to learn, like, how to swipe left, right, up, down to kind of get to what you want to do. So, and for that, I think it's actually kind of fresh, and I, and I, and I enjoy it. And I totally realize that I'm a 40-year-old guy talking about Snapchat, and maybe that sounds creepy to some people. <laughs> 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 so will you will you will, yeah, you, will, yeah. will you broadcast yourself, Ivan? Is it something that you would you would do? Uh, I, I, I we were talking about this in the past. The fact that uh, yes, there is a lot of I, I can see that there is kind of like the streams. There is either people that have something to share, public people, public people that for for them to share kind of like the behind the scenes. Uh, uh, record of what they're doing, it's really interesting and engaging for their fans or for their followers. I think there is value there. Uh, but on the other hand, you have the extreme, you have people that are sharing, you know, really, really, you know, you know, eating a, eating a, a, a taco or something. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, there is a lot of people really, really engaged on just sharing mundane, everyday situations. There is nothing wrong with that if that's what rocks your boat. I am not like that. This is one of the things that, you know, I'm having a, a hard time trying to define if I would like to start broadcasting on Snapchat, what is it the direction that, that I would like to take? Because on the one hand, yes, is sharing all the time what I'm doing or what I'm thinking or trying to share perils of wisdom. I see, I see many users doing that, you know, all of a sudden grabbing the phone and talking about, you know, personal development stuff and what you need to hustle and follow your goals and stuff like that it's kind of like everybody's saying the same thing and this is something that 
we were talking about this, we would like to avoid just using the platform to continue being an echo, doing what everybody's doing. Yeah. Uh, so I guess if, it, it, it's really important if you want to use this platform to really think about what is it that you want, what is, why do you want to yeah, what makes uh, you different, spread, yeah. what yeah. makes you different, and what is it that you want to really share that is valuable for your audience, because just using the audience to, you know, to just throw your stuff out there it doesn't make any, you know, it doesn't make any sense. I, I think love, about that. I, I love the fact that you mentioned that, uh, oh, some people are putting some very mundane things because when you think about it, it's exactly what people were saying at the very beginning of Instagram. Yeah, people are just putting, you know, pictures of food and still it boomed to an unprecedented level of people sharing sometimes mundane things and sometimes very professionally made accounts. I think the same thing more or less happens on Snapchat. You'll have people that find, uh, you know, have the right message and the right content for it. And some people will just maybe like me, I haven't really broadcasted any stories yet because as you are like, I don't, I'm not sure about what I, what I want to do there. By the way, back to Mark Sursery wrote a blog post called Snapchat 101 for VCs and old folks. I don't know if I consider myself an old folks, but many will probably do. So I should read it. You should read it too. It's actually pretty cool. It gives you some ideas of some insights on how to use a Snapchat. I think again, it's 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 valuable. I'm not sure that uh, we will open a digital loop account for a Snapchat. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if you guys, anyone is listening, has a Snapchat and wants to share the account with us and wants us to follow him or her, will be happy to do so and to mention some very cool accounts we'll, we'll, we'll find in the in the future. And I certainly hope that my friend Ivan will uh, start broadcasting stories because he's a very good, he's, an, he's been an ambassador in South America, he's been uh, Gary <laughs> V, he's a very good actor, so I really would like to, to see him doing some trapeze artist uh, directly live on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's in the to-do list. Yeah, doing some double double back somersaults while Snapchatting. That that, that that's gotta be interesting. <laughs> Good. So, guys, on that, uh, you can follow us uh, not on Snapchat, but always at the usual channels on Twitter at the Digital Loop, on Facebook uh, slash the Digital Loop, and of course, the DigitalLoop.co, our website. Uh, we had a little bit of a sound issue today, so I hope you didn't uh, you bored with us. Uh, we'll try to fix that for next time. Uh, we both uh, have had a few setups problems just before recording, so apologies for that, and also. We're not sure where we're going to record next. We might uh, take a little pause uh, because of me. It's my fault. I'm going to travel quite intensively. But I promise you, we'll, as soon as I have an opening, we'll record. So don't worry. When I say a pause, it's not going to be six months. It's going to be no more than two weeks. But still, uh, I wanted to, to mention that for our devoted listeners. And on that, Ivan? Yeah, yeah. And actually, that's a very good point because you're going to be traveling. I'm going to be traveling. Maybe later on, just you can follow us, as you mentioned, not on Snapchat, maybe on Twitter to see where we are and come and say hi. You know, I know, uh, uh, Paul, you're going to be in, in, in Moscow, in Dubai, in Hong Kong. Correct. I will be in Bulgaria. I will be in Macedonia. Probably I'm going to uh, Greece. So we're going to be all over the place. Uh, if you want to come and say hi, you know, we're always happy to, 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 to say hi and to talk with you. Exactly. See you on Snapchat, everyone. Bye. Ciao.